message tonight is all about, and I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. The title of the message tonight is Living in God's Presence. Uh, we can all do it, and, and we know that uh, He is in us, and uh, because we're believers, we've been born again, and, and He's within us. Uh, and it's about the Holy Spirit, and it's real important to understand our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to talk about uh, a man named Philip uh, and give you a little bit of background about mm -hmm. him in the book of Acts. But, but I relate a lot to Philip. Oh, I love Philip. Um, but there was a time I, I was in a different uh, arena. And let me say there are some changes going on in the body of Christ today. Mm, yes. And uh, many people are, are focused on doctrine and exactly what the word of God and everything that the word of God says. Uh, and, and then there's another stream of people uh, that are interested in the supernatural and in the presence of God and believe in miracles. And it's important for us to understand where we are and what what is the what it does it mean to be in the presence of the Lord and to realize that we can live in his presence uh, day by day and all day long and that's by our relationship with the Holy Spirit because first uh, Corinthians 6 and second Corinthians 6 talk about the Holy Spirit of being that we are temple, a, a temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And that's real important, but we have to be aware of his presence and, and, and focusing on that. And we become aware of his presence uh, with a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so that's what I want to talk about tonight. Uh, but I want to start with a personal experience. And that is uh, Sherry and I were in a congregation for uh, several years, and, and the pastor was a great Bible teacher, and uh, signs and wonders followed his ministry, and, and it was a wonderful time to be there, uh, but, but the thing about that particular person, he, he knew more than anybody in the congregation, and so and he was always studying, so we, we could never catch up with him. He always knew more than we knew. But the thing about him, he never released anybody uh, to, mm -hmm. to do what God had called them to do. And what he wanted to do was just simply, he wanted the people to sit there and learn from him. And so uh, they could have been there from a baby and all the way up until yeah, the end of their <laughs> life uh, learning. And, and a lot of people are like that. Uh, they're learning and learning and ever learning, but never, never coming, coming to, to the knowledge. knowledge. Of the truth. Of the truth. And so th there's a time that we learn and a time that we apply uh, in our lives. And, and so uh, I, I believe that all of you have a hunger uh, to, to apply what God has given you. And I, I want you to know that you've learned a lot over your lifetime and you have a lot of things in you. Uh, and so this uh, message tonight is about applying what you already know and and uh, moving out and, and letting God use you uh, in what he wants to do, uh, moving in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and the thing about that pastor, we, we loved him and we continued to have a good relationship with him, but there was a time that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said we were to leave and go to another city uh, because we had a mission uh, we had an assignment uh, in a different city. And so we went out and that's really uh, when we began to grow. Uh, we made, made some contacts and relationships and we began to really grow. And I, I think at a very rapid rate. Now we could have had a very comfortable life being under that pastor and he could have taught us all of our life. And, and uh, it was comfortable to be there, but it comes a time you have to hear the Holy Spirit and follow the Holy Spirit. So it's about obedience uh, to what the Holy Spirit is uh, speaking to you. So the person I want to look at is Philip. And in Acts chapter 6, uh, the, the, the apostles, the, the uh, apostles uh, were 
uh, having to take care of food distribution and study the word and teach the word. And they, they had so much to do. They said, we're going to, we're going to find some men, uh, just a small number of men uh, who will distribute the food uh, to the people who need mm -hmm. it. Serve, and so, the, serve the table. Sir, serve. And so that we, the apostles, could uh, put our attention on the word, word of God. And, and so they chose out just a few uh, people uh, to do this. And what they looked at was very interesting. They looked for uh, honest report. So they looked for character. And they looked for people who were filled with the Holy Spirit, mm. filled with the Holy Spirit and with wisdom. So they didn't have very many criteria. And it was very simple criteria they used. They definitely wanted people filled with, with the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit had wisdom and good character. So that's basically uh, what they were looking for. They chose out these men and they, one of them they chose uh, uh, full of the Holy Spirit, of course, uh, was Stephen. And, and they also said uh, he, he uh, was full of faith. Uh, but we also know that they chose Philip. And Philip uh, had, uh, was filled with the Holy Spirit, he had wisdom and an honest report. So he had good character. Okay, so they served in that office for a while, and then, uh, but when they were chosen, the apostles laid hands, so there was an impartation into those, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. into those men who were ser serving the table, and then the next time we see uh, Philip is in chapter 8, and, and chapter 8 of uh, Acts is a, just this fabulous chapter about uh, Philip goes down to Samaria. So he served in that place, and we all have to be faithful where we start, and we're faithful there, but that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of Philip's story, and that's not your end either. You, you have to start someplace. You become faithful there, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, have an honest report or good character, and, and have wisdom, and then there'll be, you'll receive impartations uh, that's that's God's plan here that we see it very clearly laid out in the book of Acts. This is the early, the early church. And then uh, Philip was released from that position. Uh, and it probably wasn't long because just between uh, Acts chapter six and Acts chapter eight. And then he went down because he had a higher calling on his life. And I believe many of you have a higher calling mm -hmm. on your life than what you fulfilled so far. Uh, and, and so what, what do you need to fulfill the higher calling? Well, to be faithful where you are, uh, to uh, have, have good character, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and have wisdom from above, and, and then impartations. And those might be gifts, uh, they might be uh, directions, endowments of the uh, Holy Spirit, uh, so lots of different uh, a variety really of impartations. And so you need some impartations and then you can be like Philip and go to your higher calling. Mm -hmm. And he was an evangelist. Amen. Uh, so, but he served where he was, where, where he was to begin with. And then uh, eventually you have to go to your higher calling. Otherwise you're, you're going to be uh, frustrated in, in your life. And that's very much how uh, Sherry and I felt. We mm -hmm. felt frustrated in in that place because we would never be released. Uh, the, uh, the pastor that was over us would never release us because he always knew more than we uh, could know. And, and uh, so- And he didn't want us to leave. He, he didn't want anybody to, to leave. He never wanted anybody in his ministry to leave. It's a strange, a strange uh, situation, but we had a higher calling and the Holy Spirit. Well, so we had some foundation. And after we got that foundation for a few years of, of teaching and training, then uh, the Holy Spirit uh, released us and we went out and did what God called us to do. And that's what Philip did. Philip did that. And he went to Samaria and he preached Christ and everybody in the city gave heed to what he was saying. Mm -hmm. What did he do? Well, it's his message. He preached Christ. Christ. Okay. Now, the point I want to make is that Philip didn't know everything. He didn't know everything in the Bible. Mm -hmm. He didn't know uh, 
what's in the book of Romans or the Corinthians or the Galatians or Ephesians, uh, or he didn't know Hebrews and he didn't know the the uh, the timelines in Revelation mm -hmm. and he didn't have no Peter and he did the the book of Peter and he didn't know the book of First uh, John and he didn't know the book of Jude. He he only knew about Christ because he was there with those apostles and they were talking. Uh, uh, about Jesus Christ, and, and they were sharing uh, their experiences and what they had heard and what they had learned from Christ, and then he went out and, and he preached Christ. That was the message he had, and, and there were signs and wonders. Now, this is where the divide is coming today. See, there are some people that have the uh, doctrinal foundation they need, and they're ready to go and operate in the presence of the Holy Spirit. They want to believe for miracles. They want uh, to be there in what the Lord is doing now. And they don't want just to sit there and, and keep learning doctrine, uh, doctrinal truth for the rest of their life. So it's that's where the divide is. Are, are you interested in, in just being comfortable where you are? in your congregation and let your pastors uh, teach you uh, uh, over and over the basic principles or are you wanting to move on with the Holy Spirit and, and believe for miracles in your life and I believe that everybody here has a hunger because God put a hunger in your heart uh, for other things and for our calling and purpose and that you're not on this earth just to uh, fill up space, That's right. but you are called to have an influence uh, in uh, your area and in your city. Philip mm -hmm. didn't know the book of Romans, didn't know the book of Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, because they hadn't been written. He preached Christ, and there were signs and wonders, and, and there was joy in the whole city. Yeah. Here's one man that turned up a city, upside a down. big city, upside down, turned on to Christ because he preached Christ. And you might say, well, he just didn't have the same doctrine. No, he didn't have as much knowledge as you have. Every person here has a lot more knowledge in the word of God. Now, what's the difference? Because Philip put an emphasis on the Holy Spirit and but today, there is such an emphasis on the Word of God uh, that the early church didn't even have that. They just had uh, people in their lives who would impart in them, share the gifts that they had, share what they knew, and, and then release people to go out and do mm -hmm. what they were called to yes, do. And, and operated in the presence of God, in the presence of God, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and because they were under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, they knew what to do and when to do it by being led by the Holy Amen. Spirit. So Stephen was fully equipped to preach the gospel when they uh, when he came on trial, and now Philip, we see Philip's life, he was being called as an evangelist. Now, now the really interesting thing about Philip is that he was in this humongous meeting where there were all kinds of signs and wonders mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. He had preached the gospel of Christ. He had preached Christ to them. He had all these things going on. And the Holy Spirit said, well, I need you over here to do something else. There's one person out there that needs salvation. Mm -hmm. You go down and do that. Philip was willing to do that. But in the meantime, uh, there were some people connected with Philip. Uh, and these were the apostles, and they wanted to go down and see what he uh, was doing, and they wanted to support what Philip was doing. So, it, mm -hmm. so he had some connections with people who would support what he was doing, and Peter and John came down and laid hands on the people because they had not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The infilling of the Holy Spirit is very important, but that wasn't, that wasn't, Philip's gifting. That wasn't his calling. His calling was to preach Christ. He was following the Holy Spirit. He knew what to do and when to do it. 
he operated in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and there were all kinds of miracles. Demons were cast out. People were healed, delivered. The whole town, it was, mm -hmm. uh, your city was turned upside down. Let me tell you, you have the same potential yes, as same Philip. Energy. You have that potential and more. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do and greater works than these because I go to my Father. And I'm saying that every person here listening to me has the potential if you will operate in the presence of the Holy Spirit to impact your city and other cities. See, uh, Samaria probably wasn't even Philip's city, uh, but it was a city the Holy Spirit sent him to, mm -hmm. and he turned things upside down. Now, how do you impact the city? Well, Jesus Christ uh, told us, uh, he said, woe to these uh, religious cities. Woe to them, mm -hmm. uh, Bethsaida and Chorazin, mm -hmm. and Capernaum, mm -hmm. woe to them. For I tell you, if Sodom, listen to me, Sodom had uh, seen the miracles, the signs and wonders, they would still exist today because they would have repented. So how can you change your city? How can you change your community? Well, the way to do it is to preach Christ and demonstrate the kingdom of God by healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, and casting out demons. There's a very simple uh, uh, mandate that God, that Jesus Christ gave each of us. Very simple. Preach the kingdom and heal Demonst the sick. And demonstrate, and the, kingdom. demonstrate the kingdom. And, and that's what Philip was out there doing. He was preaching Christ. He was demonstrating Christ. And, and the city was changed. And, and then he, he had some connections and he with Peter and John. And they came down and they laid hands on people and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Evidently, the apostles thought being filled with the Holy Spirit was very important because the, they wanted people filled with the Holy Spirit to be leaders in their ministry, and then when uh, Philip was out there uh, ministering to people of Christ, here comes Peter and John, and they want to baptize the people in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I ask you today, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? If you couldn't, if you weren't filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you, you wouldn't have qualified for what they were looking for, for leaders, uh, because they were looking for people full of the Holy Spirit. And, and and then when the people were born, born again and, and uh, had seen the miracles and all of Samaria had uh, given heed to um, Philip with one accord, uh, then they all needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We all need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to operate in the presence of the Holy Spirit like Philip did, then you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Philip had this great revival going on a sweeping uh, throughout Samaria and just changing the whole city. And, and then the Holy Spirit said to him, I need you in another place. I've got this man down here, this eunuch uh, that's in his chariot, and, and he needs to hear the message of, about Christ. <laughs> see, see, Philip just had one message. It was, the, it was the message of Christ. It was the message of Jesus. It, it wasn't, he didn't know nearly what you know. Hmm. And many of you are wanting to say, well, I, I'm just going to, well, I need to know more. But I tell you, Christ, Christ. hallelujah, <laughs> Philip knew Christ. That was all he knew. And, and he would present it and, and there would be demons cast out and people healed and delivered and miracles. Philip didn't know half of what you know. You know, you, you've been in the You've been in the churches and you've been taught and you've got sound doctrine in you. But he, listen to me, he was led by the Holy Spirit. He operated in the presence of the Holy Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this message today is being, is living in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So, okay, so let's talk about tools. How can we live in the presence of the Holy Spirit? Well, this is a basic beginning, and that is Ephesians 4, uh, beginning in verse 20. And, and right before 20, he talks about people doing some evil things and having some 
some bad, uh, doing some bad things and some very negative things. But he said uh, in verse 20, he said, but you're not this way. You haven't, listen to me, you have not learned Christ this way. You, you haven't learned Christ uh, like those people. Now, they, they're still doing evil and they're still doing uh, bad things, but you haven't learned. It's all about learning Christ. And, and, and what he said, well, put off the old man. I mean, put I off mean. the old man and renew. I want you to have be renewed in the spirit of your mind and, and put on the new man. Hallelujah. It's a very simple uh, mandate that I'm, I'm uh, sharing tonight. You've learned Christ. Let me tell you, you've learned Christ. You've got so much doctrine in each of you. Mm -hmm. You have learned Christ. Now, what do you need to do with what you've learned? Well, he said you need to control your thinking. Uh, it, mm -hmm. This is the foundation. Mm -hmm. This is how to move in the presence of the Lord. We've got to bring our thoughts captive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we bring every thought captive hallelujah, into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so how do we bring every thought? So this is the real critical thing here. This is the foundation of how we're going to live in the presence of the Lord. And that is about our thought life. It says you haven't learned Christ. This is, we know how you have learned Christ. You have a sound foundation. You, you, every one of you have, have a lot of knowledge about Christ. So you, you have learned Christ. And so let's put it into practice. That's what he's saying. Let's put it into practice. How we're going to do it. Well, the battle is in the mind. And so what we need to do then in, is bring every thought into, into captivity. captivity. Every thought into captivity. Now, we cannot do it in our own natural That's ability. Right. That's right. We cannot do it with our flesh. Uh, and you might say, well, I'm just going to get up and I, I'm going to read my Bible for 15 hours and I, I'm not going to um, eat anything. Or, or, that's all fleshly. Just you, just be led by the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit tells you to, be, to fast and pray, do that. Be led by the Holy Spirit. You have not learned Christ like those people who are doing evil things. And the way to put this into practice to live in the presence of the Holy Spirit is about your thought life. It has to begin with your thought life. We have to bring every thought captive. And the way we do that, when, when you know you have a, a, a negative thought, a something uh, uh, evil, or, or maybe it didn't even come from you. Maybe it came from the, uh, from the devil or maybe it came from watching tv or maybe it came from reading the newspaper or, or watching news maybe you had some evil thoughts okay so what are we going to do with those thoughts well we're going to have to replace them with what the holy spirit mm -hmm. is leading us and, and let, let me just give you some examples let's say you see somebody doing something evil to you uh now what could you do well you could be angry you could be mad you could be you could uh, be bitter, but that's not what the Bible says. We've got to replace those kinds of thoughts with things that lead to the fruit of the Spirit for, so that we can develop in the fruit of the Spirit. So uh, if there are people that have hurt us and we're angry, uh, our, then we need to show love because mm -hmm. love sees going to, is going to cast out anything that's re related to fear, that has its roots in fear. Uh, perfect love casts out fear. And, and so it's by the Spirit of God, but not just by the Spirit of God, but by producing the fruit of the Spirit, by producing the fruit of the Spirit that we can bring every thought un under in captivity. And then we're changing the way we think. And we're thinking about Christ, and we're thinking about the Holy Spirit within us. See, we're we're operating in the presence of God. If we are conscious of God at all times, then we're operating in His presence. If we're conscious of Him, and, and if we're entertaining evil thoughts, we're not conscious of God. 
if, if we're continuing to think uh, anger or bitterness or, or lust, okay, so how, how do you get rid uh, of, let's say, lust? Uh, well, you, you, let's focus on purity and, and let's pray and pray in the Holy Spirit and ask for guidance of the Holy Spirit and so that we can renew our mind so that we can think on purity and bring forth purity. And, and if, we're, if we have thoughts of hatred, bitterness, or unforgiveness, mm -hmm. then we need love. And so what we need to be doing is praying, praying, praying in the Holy Spirit, following the Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit, and we're replacing these inferior thoughts with superior thoughts oh, that's that, and, and that's going to upgrade us mm. in our lifestyle mm. from being carnally minded from being carnally minded to be spiritually minded Amen. to be Amen. carnally minded is death, death but to be spiritually minded is life, life and peace. peace hallelujah this is a very simple message tonight it's a very easy thing to get a hold of and I'm giving you some tools here, how to live in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we're living in the presence of the Holy Spirit, we can expect miracles. And, and they come from faith because we're building up our faith, listening to the Holy Spirit. And following, praying, praying in following the Holy in the Holy Spirit, following the Holy Spirit and praying in the Holy Spirit, then we're beginning to build our faith. And we have to have faith to believe for miracles. Uh, but you've got to have, you, you've got to get your thoughts captive and under control. It said, mm -hmm. see Philippians, and I know you're familiar with all of these things, but I'm bringing them to you in a new way, in a way that will show you what kind of life you want. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to live the comfortable life where people spoon feed you uh, from the Bible all of your life and, and you live from the cradle uh, to the grave uh, in a comfortable setting uh, where they're just feeding you and you're not doing what God has put you on this earth to do? Or are you going to choose to live in the presence of the Holy Spirit, be led by the Holy Spirit? If you choose to be led by the Holy Spirit, you can't just think about anything you want to do. You have to be conscious of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. You've got to get your thoughts. That's where it starts. Get your thoughts uh, renewed. Get, get your thoughts on Christ, on higher things. Set your affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. And so this is a very simple message. Then you, your faith is going to be growing as you're doing this, as you're thinking about Christ. And, and your faith is going to be growing and you can believe for miracles. And, and let me tell you, your city can have a revival if you believe for signs and wonders. And you begin to demonstrate signs and wonders and, and you want them and you desire them and you're desiring the presence of the Lord and you're wanting a change in your community. Uh, you're 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 wanting your community to change. You want revival to come in your community. Well, it's going to happen by one person. It's going to happen by one person who will declare Christ to them and demonstrate Christ with signs and wonders by healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, uh, raising the dead, and casting out demons. Then the whole city will be changed. It'll be a revival in your city. You can bring it forth, but if you just sit and want to be comfortable the rest of your life, your city's going to go to hell. There's a lot of people in your city that will go to hell. They need the revival. We need the revival of Christ. They need to know Christ, and you know enough. You have the doctrine. You have a sound doctrine within you. I believe that's what the Holy Spirit is saying that you have a sound doctrine within you and what you need to do is to follow the Holy Spirit because God has put things inside of you that are treasures inside of you that need to be shared with other people. And that's the reason you're here. Why would you be attracted to a Zoom meeting uh, where, where Sherry and I are there 
because we're not like other people. We believe in miracles. Mm -hmm. we, we see miracles. We, we proclaim miracles. We proclaim this Christ that Philip preached. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to just wait until we know everything. We found out Christ is alive and he's living inside of me. He's living inside of Sherry. He's living inside of you. He just wants you to release him, believe for miracles in your life, and you can turn your city upside down like Philip turned Samaria upside down by preaching Christ and demonstrating Christ with signs and wonders. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like to give an example. Uh, Brother Fred was talking about uh, bringing our thoughts into captivity. And when I was diagnosed with terminal thyroid cancer, uh, I guess about 28 years ago, um, there would be thoughts that would, would come into my, my mind, especially when I would get a bad report. Uh, you know, they would do testing on me and, and then they would call me up and tell me what the test said. And, and, all of, all of, you could only live six months. And all of the, the tests uh, that they did on me was positive for this type of terminal cancer. They gave me six months to live. And they said that it, it spread too fast to, to do any type of chemo treatments. And, and so every, every time I would get one of these reports back, uh, my mind would just begin to, to go to different thoughts um, about my my husband, about my life, about my children. Um, and, and the only way that I was able to bring those thoughts into captivity, and that's why, and the reason I'm telling you this is that I am a pusher of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues. To me, it is not something that, that is, is um, unnecessary or is a luxury uh, you can do it if you want to and don't do it if you don't want to. It is a necessity uh, to live. And it was a necessity in, in my life. And so when I would get these bad reports, I would just go uh, into my bedroom and I would just sit there with no one else being in there. And I would begin to pray in my prayer language, in tongues, through the Holy Spirit, and I would come into the presence of God. And when I came into the presence of God, the Holy Spirit would begin to teach me and give me scriptures. He would bring, he would bring verses to, to my mind. And that's the way I was able to control the, the other thoughts, the negative thoughts, the evil thoughts, uh, the deadly thoughts. Uh, was with the Holy Spirit. And so I can, you know, I will, to my last day on earth, I will push the Holy Spirit. I will say you need to be filled. And when Brother Fred said filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, people take that different ways. You know, the Holy Spirit comes into you when you're saved. He's there. He's there. The, the Father is there, the, the Son is there, and the Holy Spirit is there when you become a born again, when you become a Christian. But the Holy Spirit has much power to give to you. And the way you, you connect with that Holy Spirit power is through being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, I didn't understand that. You know, I, I was raised up in, in a denomination that if you mentioned the Holy Ghost, you were talking about something spooky out there. And, you know, but it's, 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 it's a power. It's power. Uh, it's power to overcome. It's power to, and, and, you know, this was something that I was so thankful that I had already reached this point. Um, Brother Fred and I, um, went to that through that situation with our daughter at uh, 14 months and the doctor said she was going to die and the Lord gave her a miracle and we continued searching 
uh, the scriptures to, to come into the presence of God. We want him to come into his presence. And, and he began to teach us about the Holy Spirit. And then he sent workers across our path that, that gave us tapes and CDs and, and um, uh, teachings, uh, sermons. On, on being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I remember that we would go to our congregation and then we would come home and we would turn on the TV and we would watch these ministers on TV that were full of power and were doing healings and miracles. And, and we would watch that. And there was a desire that began to uh, develop in us and and we wanted more we didn't want to be comfortable anymore we didn't want to uh, go to every service and and they would tell us you must be born again you know after you're born again then you need to grow you need to grow up hallelujah I don't I didn't need to hear that anymore because I was born again I was a Christian from age nine and, and brother Fred from the age 13. You know, we, we love the Lord. We knew the Lord. We needed more. We needed more. You know, and I believe that the body of Christ, uh, that hunger and that thirst for, for more of his presence, for more of his power is coming forth. And I believe that this Zoom meeting, I mean, I'll close it out tonight. If there's no hunger there, if there's no thirst there, then that's not where I'm going to be. I'm going to be where people want to know more and they desire more. And I believe that George prayed that tonight. I believe he prayed over us. And I and I want more. And I and I see a hunger in each one of you. And so that's why we're still here. Because the Lord send us, sends us where people are hungry. He sends us to where people are thirsty. He sends us to people who are hurting. And if the in the name of Jesus, there, there, there are some that are watching tonight. Uh, there's wounds. I see some wounds tonight. I see some wounds that, that have been opened up um, recently uh, that inside of you that the Lord is saying, Come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a word from the Holy Spirit right there in the name of Jesus. But we all need that power of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray in tongues. That brings us into the presence of God. That puts us on the same wavelength. I know my dad is a ham operator. He He's a radio, uh, he's 95 years old, but he's, uh, he's in charge of emergency uh, planning and, and, and services there in our town, in our hometown. And he's a ham operator and, and he wants to get on the right frequency. He wants to get on the right channel so that, so that he can talk with people from all over the world. But we need to get on the right channel with the Lord. And we do that through the Holy Spirit. We do that when we begin to pray in tongues, but it takes us to the right channel. And we begin to pray in that, in that prayer language and the enemy cannot understand it. He cannot get into our prayers and into our whatever we're, we're praying for, or whatever we're doing. Uh, he cannot understand the prayer language. Praise the name of Jesus. That's a protection. It's a protection for me. And so I just encourage you tonight to, uh, to want to go more into the presence of God.